A beautiful Monday to all of you. Thanks for joining us again in prayer. And if you had weather anything like us here in St. Louis in the United States, my gosh, I was thanking God all day, every day. It was so beautiful. As is today, because we're together in prayer. Thanks for being here. I'm Father Ron, and this is the God Minute. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth shall shall declare your praise. Psalm 22 Are you there? O God, why have you left me? Why are you so far from me? I can no longer feel you near. I reach desperately for you. But I cannot find you. And yet, I know that you have been with me from the very beginning of my life. I know that you have cared for me through these many years. But God, I need you now. I am in trouble and I can't find you or feel you near. I know, O God, that much of it is a matter of my foolish feelings. The fact is, you are not far off. You know both my feelings and my failings. Yet, you love me and accept me. You will save me, even from myself. I dedicate myself anew to you, O Lord. I will trust in you even when I cannot find you. You are my God. I will praise your name and proclaim your love to people all around me. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Let us run the race with perseverance. During this year, I've witnessed this. In August, after a seven-month battle with lung cancer which metastasized to her brain, my sister-in-law Norma died. Even with radiation, chemo, alternative medicine, and mountains of prayer for her healing, her condition grew worse. Eight days before her passing, Gary, my brother, decided to bring her home and trust in God's will. He contacted hospice and maintained faith in a miraculous healing. The morning of Norma's death, the hospice nurse told Gary it was just a matter of hours. He then told his wife, If Jesus isn't going to heal you, then you can go to him. Gary gathered the grandchildren. They prayed and each told her goodbye. Norma took two breaths and her spirit peacefully, painlessly, went home to God. In truth, since their daughter and son-in-law were killed in a motorcycle accident 14 years ago, and Norma and Gary got custody of their two young grandsons, Norma has grieved. She has not been at peace. We've determined the miracle we sought was emotional, mental, and spiritual, rather than physical. Through all of this, Gary has persevered and exhibited a deep, abiding faith. A man raised to be the breadwinner and the community leader, leaving the homemaking to the woman, he stepped up to the plate, learning to cook 
under the tutelage of his wife, to clean and do laundry, all the while caring for her personal needs as she grew weaker and weaker. He continually said, I want whatever is best for Norma. That's giving God control. In the Gospel according to John, chapter 11, verses 25 and 27, Jesus tells Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if you die, will live. Gary models for me Martha's response. I do believe. What then is faith? Faith is our yes to God's plan, God's will for us, even when it might be in conflict with our own and we don't understand it. Our faith needs to permeate our daily activities. God offers us all the help we need, and we respond in faith, keeping our eyes on Jesus. In a Peanuts cartoon, Peppermint Patty says to Charlie Brown, Sometimes I feel like I've done all that I can do. How real and honest. We've all experienced that helplessness. Charlie Brown's reply is perfect. Then he says, It might be time to let go and let God do it. Not everything is meant for you to handle. Trust God. That's what I've witnessed in Gary, and that's what we're all invited to live. Faith with perseverance, keeping our eyes on Jesus. And together has Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, when my life isn't focused upon you, I am disoriented and and oftentimes lose my way. Keep my eyes open and fixed on you in all things, but especially when I am afraid and lost. For I do believe And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the God of all consolation bless your days in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Isn't it great to have Sister Carol with us on the team? My gosh, that was such a beautiful reflection. Thank you, Sister, for that. And also, before we end, folks, just to remind you, um, hopefully you got your week ahead email newsletter uh, today, and there you can click on and continue our video interview series with one member of our team. It's also on our website, blog, our social media pages as well. Every Monday we have that. So hope you enjoy that. And also... Starting this week and continuing, you can now access our prayer, the God Minute, on any of the, what do you call it, uh, Alexa or Siri or Hey Google. Just call out, ask them to play the God Minute podcast, and your prayer will begin. We hit the big time. (laughs) Even robots know who we are. So try it out. It's kind of fun. Anyway, God bless you all. Thank you for being here. We'll see you tomorrow.